guys, I'm Daryl and welcome to my house build. As you can see, it's in construction still. So far, there's a lot of interesting points from my point of view. We're in a bushland area and as such, uh, we have fire risks and I'd also say we've got a termite risk. We've got a steel frame on this. Uh, the last couple of houses I've built have had wooden frames. This is a steel frame. It's all done in a factory in CAD, an output. Uh, so all the frames should be, should be square and true and they're all just marked and that just goes together like a big Meccano set. At this point of time they put the slab down mid-December um, and the, we had the builders holiday that's four or six weeks and they've started back in first week or two in February. We're now in early March and frames finished, roofs on, fascias on, gutters on uh, and we're cladding and we're cladding in Hubel. There's a few smarts I'm really interested with this and how it goes up. The, the frame is is awesome. I look at the wooden frames going up around me and it's like, geez, I'm glad I've got steel this time because it's a really nice looking frame. Every, everything's, all the noggins and everything are just perfectly square. It's just a really nice looking frame. The roof is a Colourbond steel product. So, you know, it, it'll last for years. I've, I've had concrete tiles before and they seem to crack after a while, the odd tile. Um, so hopefully with uh, a corrugated Colourbond roof, you won't have those issues. And being in a fire area too. There's no little pathways for embers or the like to go in if we do have a fire at some point, which I'm sure at some point, whether it's back burning or the like, we will. Now underneath the corrugated roof sheets, it's got a 60 millimetre blanket that's got foil sheeting on both sides and in between it's got a small amount of insulation. I've built a few times before. Uh, in those builds, you generally pick out your project home, which is what this is, make your alterations, pick all your colours and finishes, they draw it up, put it into council and start the build. With this, it's been a good 12 months of paperwork. Uh, nowadays, you have to get uh, your fire ratings. They call it a, a bell rating. So there's a bell 12 and a half, uh, 19, 29 and 40, and then a fire zone. Uh, we're in a 29, so it's up there. There's only the 40 in the fire zone above. Uh, as such, we've had to go to a thicker window, uh, Tough on glass windows, instead of being three millimetres thick, the glass is five. And anywhere where you could have um, embers come in has to be sealed up. You can't have soft woods on the outside. There's cladding or the like, they have to be hardwood. So there's, there's a bit in that. The, the major thing that we found was a basic rating where they look at thermal loads inside the house and they model them. With that, we've had to go to tinted windows all, all the way around. Our stacker doors throughout the house have had to be double glazed. Um, there was a thermal load issue in the foyer and we went to a louvered window which fixed that. But um, on that window and one at one of the stacker doors at the back, we also had to put in a, uh, a basic awning, which is a colour bond black or whatever colour you choose. Ours is black. Awning that goes over the, the door and that window so it gets some shade. All in, we've also had to put in so much insulation. The roof has the thickest insulation bats that you can get. Um, all the walls are insulated between the the top and the bottom level, the floor is insulated, um, the whole place is insulated. And it's clad in hubel, uh, underneath the hubel is a wall wrap which you can see has been put on and the hubel has a bigger R rating than normal bricks. So hopefully it'll be quite a comfortable house to live in and uh, a cost effective house to also hoot and cool. Late, later on we'll probably put in uh, solar panels. I had a quote today for a 10 kilowatt system and our electricity bill should be quite cheap. But anyway, let's have a look at some of the smarts here. I'm, it's the way they put these buildings up nowadays. It is a big Meccano set. From how they put the frame together, there's then galvanised brackets that bolt onto the ceiling trusses that the fascia panel that is colour bond too clicks into and then there's brackets that click into that where the gutters click into and the gutters are also colour bond. So there's no painting above the fascia line, which, which is great. Um, we do have a rendered finish with the hubel. That's how the hubel's protected and we can change the, the colour of the house as we go. So that's not a bad thing with regards to, to fashion as we go on. 
let's have a look at where we are at the moment. Now as for the bushland around us, that's what we've got. That goes down into a gully with a creek at the bottom. So you can understand why we need some protection for bushland fires or back burning, whichever the case may be. Now, now that is the blanket underneath the corrugated roof and that is the insulation underneath it. Um, you can see the brackets that clip onto the roof trusses and the fascia panel clicks into those and then those brackets go over the fascia panel and into that the gutter clicks into that and you can see the colour bond roof above that and then they've wrapped the whole house in this blanket and we'll go downstairs and go out and I'll show you how they put the hoobal on because that's really interesting. Now this is the hoobal sheeting and it's an autoclaved aerated concrete product. Um, it's really light, like I can lift up a whole sheet easy. Hoobal has been used overseas for over 70 years and it's been used in Germany as, in, as big masonry elements and in Japan as panelised elements. It forms the mainstream of building in both Germany and Japan. Hebel is one of those materials that actually occurs in nature, but we've been able to manufacture it using common materials like sand, cement, gypsum, lime and so on. And we've been able to do it um, in a way that um, uses very little energy, in fact a third of the energy that you would, you would use in, 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 in making other masonry products. And you can replicate this natural mineral. So, you know, in a fire, it doesn't give off toxic fumes, it doesn't burn, it's a great insulator against the heat and the cold, um, acoustically provides great acoustic insulation, you know, all in one material. This is a piece of scrap hoobal I've found in the rubbish. It's quite soft and you can cut it with normal hand tools, or in this case, because it has the Rio, uh, a circular saw or the like. It actually has a higher R rating than traditional brick. And some of the people that I've spoken to when I was choosing this, that live in Hubel houses were saying how great they are to live in. So it will be very interesting. Once this is on, and I'll show you how they affix it to the walls, they render over the top and it's exactly the same to look after as the rendered brickwork. So it's, it's quite a good product, but it'll be interesting to see how it goes long term. Now, once they do the wall wrap, uh, they then put on these battens, which are an aluminium profile, and then to the battens, they then bolt the hoobal. And you, you can see here where they've bolted it and filled the, the bolt holes with a bespoke hoobal uh, filler. And you can see some gaps here, however, they do use the glue in the gaps as such and then sand that back. And once that's done, they sand it all back and render over the top, and it's no different than a brick house that's rendered. However, it's got a slightly higher R rate. So it's quite an interesting material. You can see some of these are cut ready to install, and you can see the Rio through the middle of it. So this is where we are at the moment. The plumbing's all done with PEX fittings and flexible hoses. Uh, in my estate, we have a few different water supplies. Um, this Mauve water supply here is recycled water. The black, the red, and there's also a green which we have here, which comes from a 4,000 litre water tank we have on the side. So it's all coming together quite well. It's quite exciting. We have a whole pillar of sandstone cladding from base to under the eaves of the house. So that'll be good when that goes on. But you can see here with the hoobal finished on this lower level, what it looks like. It's, it's, it's so quick. They'll have all this house finished this week in hoobal.
whereas a bricklayer would be a good month. But the best piece of the house, let's go and have a look at that. And welcome to my garage. <laughs> well, at some point it will be anyway. Now this garage is a standard for modern times double garage. I've had it made wider slightly. So I'm hoping down this wall here, I can have benches and tools and everything. We have a three meter high ceiling and we've got a 2.3 meter high front door on it. So it shouldn't be a problem getting lifted vehicles in here unless they're on 40s. But of all the houses I've built, this is probably the best one at this point. I can't find much wrong with it at all. I will do a build series on fitting out this garage. I plan to have a small hoist in here. It won't be a four point post or anything because the floor won't take it. Um, but it will be a mid-level hoist. So we've got to coat the floor and do it properly. Really looking forward to that. So that's a quick squeeze at our new house. I'm not going to bang on about it though. When there's substantial change, I'll, I'll give you a look. I am looking forward to the build series on the garage, however. Um, that's going to be awesome. It's been quite a while since I've had a decent garage and I think this will be outfitted better than what I've ever had. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel because it really helps us out and we'll see you next time. Bye now.